Adam Savage here in Prop Store in London with Stephen Lane. With Stephen, I think this has to be one of the weirder <laughs> spacesuits in your collection, if not the weirdest. Okay, yeah, I mean, I'll give you that. I mean, look at the size of this thing. Just the, just, I mean, the volume that we're standing next to here, it's just, I don't know, it's the cross between a spacesuit and a dive, deep dive suit almost, isn't it? it? It is, and it's almost cartoonish in its volume when you step up to it. This is from Sunshine. Sunshine, yes. This is famously yeah. a, a spacesuit supposed to protect you if you're too close to the sun. Yes, yeah, no, that's right. Which I, I suppose if you think about the way that you're insulated in a deep dive suit, against those extreme temperatures, then there's some sort of reasoning and logic behind this, isn't there really? And of course on this one, you know, very, very small. We've seen so many other helmets which have a big bubble visor yeah. to them than the helmet. You know, this is super minimal, isn't it? You the know? opposite, right? It would be yeah. welding glass up here because you're close proximity to the sun. I am fascinated by this Mylar texture. Do you know who built the suit, first of all? <sighs> That's a really good question, actually, and it doesn't come to mind. Oh yes, I do. It's Prop Shop. Yeah, okay, I think okay. I think this was uh, this was Prop Shop uh, based at Pinewood Studios, mm -hmm. who were uh, uh, certainly very heavily involved with the construction of these. And um, I think there was a, a huge amount that went into this. I think this was all custom finished and it, custom I made. I've, that's what I felt when I came up and looked at it. I wondered if you could buy Mylar in this fold and I thought maybe it looks like they kind of had to do it for the production. Yeah, yeah, I think there was because when we, we worked with Danny Boyle's production company, DNA, um, at the wrap of this particular production. And so we got a lot of the props and costumes, yeah. uh, not just the space suits. And we had half suits and things like that, because obviously it wasn't practical for the actors to be in full suits all the time. <laughs> but we got a, like a roll of this that came with it. And it oh. felt very much like that that spare material had come off the sort of the line while they were working through it. It is, um, you know, spacesuits, the, 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 the science fiction spacesuits are always trying to speak to something we haven't yet done in space, like an exploration we haven't done. And this, of all the pieces in your collection, feels to me the closest to like a genuine science future for us. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's just not something that we've ever seen before. It's not something that we've approached conceptually, you know, how are we going to get any closer right. to the sun and how are we going to deal with it if we do sort of thing. Um, so I think you're absolutely right. This is sort of a, a breach into the unknown, a step into the unknown, isn't it? And I'm sure you're right about the inspiration of the old dive suits, especially when it comes to these incredible, almost fifth element style boots. There's a bit of fifth element there, there is isn't a little there? bit of yeah, fifth element, like right. the cops. I wouldn't be surprised to see the cops wearing these. But it's, or, it's almost uh, Art Deco, 20,000 leagues under the sea. You know what little, I mean? It's yeah. got a little bit of influence from that as well. I, 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 I have to imagine that the designing this was thrilling and that the, when prop shops started constructing, I mean, if I had to build this, I would be overwhelmed. At yeah. the same time, I'd be so excited about making something so peculiar and amazing. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And, and look, you know, I know that the design of this created some major problems on set as well, because of course, you know, what can't we see here? The actor. We yeah. can't see who's in this. We can't. They can't communicate. Yeah. And um, I think that the first day of filming, they actually had a stunt person in a suit, in a harness, in a rig, up high. Oh my gosh. They'd gone out the night before, perhaps, to celebrate the fact that it was the starting of filming the next day, and they passed out in the <gasps> suit. And uh, for a few minutes, nobody knew what was going on. It's like, we've got no communication wow. here. They're up on a rig. You can't see it. There's no, no facial contact whatsoever. And they got, got, a, got this, uh, this stunt person down off the rig, cracked the helmet open, and then the next problem they realized was that that person inside the suit has to be responsible for undoing the fixings that break the suit apart. Oh, no. And that person's passed out. And so they had to cut the suit open on day one of filming. Oh it was my it was a major major problem. Yeah, and it's you know I, I, like so many of these film projects, you know that everybody's trying to solve the problem of design, aren't they? Yeah. How do we bring the design to the film? And uh, while you're going through that, there's not you're not necessarily have the time to think about all the different aspects of what ifs. Right. And this was on the first day of filming, so it was there was there was big discussions about that. Subsequently, they changed the way that the the fittings worked on the inside. Right. Right. that somebody could actually get in if, if somebody had a problem with it. So yeah, it was it's a difficult, difficult problem to solve. It is a very lesser discussed aspect of filmmaking. We talk a lot about the engineering of props, but we, we don't usually also talk about the fact that part of the engineering is engineering how the film will engage with the prop, which is engineering. 
Yes. To make sure that somebody can get out of it, that you yes. can keep them safe, that you yes. can keep them cool, that you can communicate with them. Yeah. Only recently I built a spacesuit, which is the first one I've made where I have comms in and out. Right. And I am not a claustrophobic person, but I definitely felt less claustrophobic when I had the full ability to hear outside and speak to people right. outside. Because yeah, yeah, I've yeah. been in seats going, <laughs> 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 Good impersonation. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And I, and I think that a lot was taken away from this and learned from this. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I think we've also got to call out uh, the sort of South Parky style reference. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, Kenny. We, can't, we can't just stand here between this and not mention that at all. You know, I mean, this was during a period when South Park was also incredibly popular. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, there's definitely a Kenny Hood going on there, isn't there? The, the thing that, I mean, you know, I've seen pictures of this. I, I knew this was in your collection, but standing in front of it, even knowing all that didn't prepare me for how magnificently absurd it is in person. Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm so grateful that Danny Boyle made a movie that this is the space for. Like the, the world needs more design that is this strange and far thinking. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and I think, you know, that's part of the allure of collecting spacesuits is that there is these variations, these differences, and, and there are these trends as well, mm -hmm. as we see mm -hmm. with, with, with design influences across the board. But yeah, you're right. This one really stands out and it, it makes its point, doesn't it? Do you know how many of these they made for the film? Um, it was only a handful. Yeah. I feel like we had no more than perhaps three complete suits that came back from the production. Wow. And then as I mentioned earlier, there were some half suits and component pieces. I remember we had a helmet that was specifically built for a POV for the camera or for, for the, uh, the, the, the person in the suit looking out. Right. So they had a very special rig and it was just this sort of section here as well. So there was a lot of consideration about how they were going to emulate and, and sort of replicate what the uh, uh, the the occupant was going to be seeing, but yeah, I mean, literally, there's only a handful of these in existence. So. I mean, when I look at the, the the main fiberglass of the torso, which yeah. is a monolithic piece, is yeah. almost a meter wide. Yeah, uh, um, that mold itself weighs probably over a hundred pounds. Yeah. If I had to hazard a guess, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's a hard mold with hard pieces, but yeah, no, it's it's definitely solid construction there, right the way through. And you've got some really nice metal work on here as well, sort of anodized aluminium, isn't it? That's yeah. uh, that's been finished off. I, I feel like the uh, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, these have got rotation in them as well. So you've got bearing joints on oh, on, wow. on that oh, as well. Oh yeah, look at that. So. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that this was a really difficult thing to work out because ultimately it is more about just the, <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I can rebuild anything I break. <laughs> I don't want to, and no, you do, nor do you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, but I th yeah, I feel like this was quite difficult. You know, when you look at the design of where you're coming out over the shoulder yeah. here and it sort of sags, you sort of got to have a person in there to, to give it the form, don't right. you, as much as anything else. But this is clever. This I, this I really like. And then I feel like there was maybe, uh, oh, I don't have my glasses on me, but I, I feel like there are, oh yeah, I think, can you see there are lights in the fingertips? Is that right? Uh, I, I, oh, there is, yes, yes. In, the, in index and middle finger, yes. there are lights. Yeah, yeah, so you've actually got lights in there. So as they're handling something as well, you know, you can get that effect in close up of them coming into it, so. So that actually has a harbinger back to the Mercury era suits, the early oh. Mercury and Gemini gloves uh, had, after they were built, had a little, a bit of fabric added to the index and middle finger with two little flashlights. You remember the bulbs that have a lens in the bulb? Yes, yeah, yeah. A pair of those. And John Glenn complained that they were tight enough that made his fingers fall asleep. <laughs> Wow. Uh, and so, so they're, they're, they're literally a, a calling bit back bit. to Mercury era spacesuits oh, with that. That's brilliant, man. It is a phenomenal and mind blowing piece. Yeah. I love this, the teching and distressing that we've got on in the burns. In yeah. There. Yeah. Where it's been it's been singed over time. I, I just have to say, I mean, it's just it is such a beautiful piece. I I can't. It, it's it's absurd. It is. It's yeah. absurd in the best way. And you've got to have the room to house it. I mean, you literally need like a warehouse for this thing, oh, don't you? No, yeah, no, no. I, mean, I you know your people have been like, oh, okay, we all move the sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> it, it won't go through most doors. <laughs> no, right. Oh my God. Of course, you'd have yeah, to. How did you get it in here? Yeah, right? break, well, break it down. Pieces. Yeah, many, many pieces. Yeah. Stephen, thank you so much. I I can't believe I got to see this in person. Uh, it's been a pleasure, man. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects. 
questions. You get to ask direct questions during my live streams, and we have some members-only videos, including the Adam real-time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.